Hello everyone, we are ready for chapter 33. That's amazing. Um, just to warn, oh, of the treasure hunter's tale. Just to warn you, I have a bird feeder literally just there on my window and um, the blue tits are visiting it quite a lot today. And it's very like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like tapping on the window and stuff. So it's not bothering me, but um, hopefully it won't ruin the recording. We shall see. When Mr. Newhart walked back home, many people went out of their way to avoid him. People often do that after the death of a baby. There is something about it that no one knows what to say, so they just avoid you. It is a sad truth, and only a very few who will reach out. He walked up the little lane to the house, and there in the garden, playing with the children, was the officer. The comforter had come, and was looking after the children to give Miss Poor in Spirit a much-needed rest. Welcome back, Father of Iron, he said, standing up and giving Mr Newhart a huge hug. Mr Newhart had never felt a hug from the officer before, and he loved it so much. The immediate sense of comfort and understanding and protection and strength that he felt in that one hug was unmatched. Thank you, he said firmly, looking into his face. You knew all along, he said, smiling. You knew. Levi is safe with me whispered the officer into the grieving father's ears, and those words had such an effect on Mr Newhart. I know, he said, and I shall see him again, he said with blessed assurance. He hugged the children, who had not heard this very special conversation, and they all went into the house. I wish we had all been there to witness the emotion and joy and tears of that evening. Mr Newhart didn't really know how to tell the family, so he just gave it to them straight, which is often the best way with children, and Miss Poor in Spirit just burst into tears. Everyone sent huge messages of thanks and praise to the king via the officer, who was delighted to take them. That night, Freddie prayed for his new baby brother. Dear Lord, thank you for Iron. Please help me to be a lovely big brother to him and teach him all about Jesus. Hope also prayed. She was still a little unsure and was mostly concerned for her mother, but she prayed for her new baby brother too. Miss Poor in Spirit hugged Mr Newhart with such joy and then felt her way upstairs. Thank you, Lord, she prayed. Your ways are far beyond our ways. Please look after my daughter and help her new son. Please help her as she adapts. Help her to understand that it is okay to grieve for Levi and feel overwhelming love for Ian. Help her not to feel guilty for the joy she feels or for the grief. Please also help her when she comes home. Help the town people to accept Ian into their lives like they have done for Freddie and Hope and help all of the children to grow up in the saving knowledge and love of you. In your name and for your glory. Amen. The next day, Hope asks if she could go out into the meadow to pick some flowers. For mummy and baby brother, she had said. Miss Poor in Spirit smiled and the officer, who had stayed with the family, offered to take her. She toddled off her little puggy hand in the officer's big one. She chatted away to him like he was an old friend, which gave Mr Newhart great encouragement that Hope was coming to love him too. Freddie had also got up early and was busy making something by the fire. He was whittling a piece of wood, his head down, very concentrating. A few times he got up, walked across the room and rummaged in his grandmother's sewing basket and then once he went over to Miss Poor in Spirit and whispered something to her and she pointed to a drawer and he went and rummaged in that. When Hope got back with a lovely bunch of flowers and a lovely pheasant feather which she had found and thought baby brother might like it for tickling, the rest of the family had got their things and were ready to go. Freddie's work was wrapped in some brown paper and he was holding on to it very tightly. They all walked down the lane, past the houses in the town. Mrs. My Weakness is His Strength was outside, putting out her washing. She came to the fence. How are you all? She asked kindly, with a lump in her throat. We're off to see baby brother, said Hope sweetly. Mrs. My Weakness is His Strength looked at Mr. Newhart in surprise and bewilderment. I'm sorry, she said. I heard. I know. But God has done something amazing and wonderful, broke in Mr Newhart, and quickly explained the events of the past few days. With tears of joy and sorrow, Mrs My Weakness's strength hugged the family. Oh, do wait here, she said suddenly and ran back into the house. She came back shortly, carrying a little bundle. Something for the new baby, she said with tears in her eyes. I've been knitting it since I heard you were going to have another, and now I'm so joyful and thankful to the king that I can give it to you. Thank you very much, said Miss Poor in Spirit, feeling the lovely soft blanket. I'm sure Ian will love it. Ian, what a lovely, unusual name, said the librarian. 
And is this news you want spreading? She asked kindly, for I know there are plenty of people who heard about the sad news and didn't know what to say. If you like, I can spread the joyful tidings for you. Yes, please, said Mr Newhart. That would be so helpful, as I know the town has struggled with the news about Levi. Oh, was that his name? Mrs My Weekly's is his strength asked, her eyes filled with tears. She squeezed his hand. That's a precious name, she said. Now, children, send my love to your mother, won't you? And give Iron a special hug from his auntie. My weakness is his strength, won't you? She waved them goodbye and they walked off down towards the hospital. Mrs Beloved of the King had had quite a night. Little Iron was very awake and wanting to be cuddled the whole time, which she didn't mind at all because she wanted to hold him to her heart too. So in the morning, although she was tired as anything, she still washed her face and did her hair so she looked presentable for her most important visitors. She was lying on the bed with Iron in her arms. He had just fed and was very sleepy, so she was singing to him when there was a joyful commotion at the other end of the ward and in burst her family. The children were a little nervous at first, but quickly got used to seeing their mother holding a newborn baby and they cooed over him and gave him kisses. Hope gave her mother her bunch of flowers. Thankfully, it was back in the day when flowers were allowed in wards and Miss Poor in Spirit had very thoughtfully brought a vase with her. And then Hope came up to Iron and very gently placed a feather on his tummy. Iron squirmed as it woke him up, but his mother, not wanting Hope to be upset by his reaction, rocked him gently and he settled. Thank you, darling, she said. He loves it and so do I. Hope smiled and patted the little baby's hand. So tiny, she said. Then, without any encouragement, she leant forward and whispered, I love you, baby brother. This made the women cry happy tears and Mr Newhart gave Hope a hug. Then Freddy unwrapped his parcel. Mr Newhart was keen to see what he had been making all this time, as Freddy had kept it a secret. Only his grandmother knew. Freddy held out his gift. It was a piece of wood with little slits in it through which he had threaded strips of ribbon, and when you jiggled it, the ribbons danced. That's brilliant, Freddy, said Mr Newhart, very touched with the effort put in. Iron will be able to enjoy that for years. Mrs Beloved of the King held it above Iron and gave it a jiggle. The little baby, who had opened his eyes with all the noise and commotion, opened them wider. I think he likes it, smiled his mother. Well done, Freddy. It really is lovely. So, does Grandmother get to have a cuddle? asked Miss Poor in Spirit. She'd been very patient, but she longed to hold her new and very special grandson. She held out her arms, and Mrs Beloved of the King carefully passed Iron to her husband, who whispered, We'll have a cuddle later, my son. Ion started crying, as often happens when babies are taken from their mother's embrace, and Mr Newhart gently placed him in the arms of his grandmother. And, as also often happens with grandmothers, Ion quickly settled into her warm arms and snuggled into her shawl and fell asleep. I can see you're going to be a favourite, said Mr Newhart ruefully. While Ion was having a nice grandmother cuddle time, the rest of the family sat on the bed and chatted together. There were tears and cuddles, and then Mr Newhart remembered the blanket from Mrs My Weakness' strength and gave it to his wife. Mrs Beloved the King held it at her face, as women are wont to do, and a tear trickled down her cheek. So, she knows about Levi and Iron, she asked. Yes, love, said Mr Newhart. She saw us walking down to visit you and the baby, and I had to tell her everything. He put his arm around his wife, and she's going to spread the news, so I'm guessing you'll have more visitors in the next few days. I believe you, said his wife, shaking her head. Probably the whole town, she smiled and looked proudly at her little family. God is good, she said, all the time.